Hello everyone and welcome to Pyanodon's Mods. This is Otaku Showboat and in this tutorial, this is actually going to be a bit more of an overview of the various individual mods that make up the Pyanodon's suite of overhaul mods, uh, as well as talking a bit about what I recommend to use in conjunction with uh, the Pi Suite, as well as talking a little bit about some of the derivative mods that uh, change the Pinodon's experience on the whole. So that's sort of what the overview is going to be all about today. I'm going to talk about the individual components of the Pi Suite, uh, go into uh, the game and show you exactly what types of things are involved in each piece of the mod and what they do and uh, then also talk a little bit about what additional mods you might want to consider running along with uh, the Pi Suite. So if you would like, don't forget to engage with this series by commenting, liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell to help make this series higher up in search results. If you'd like, you can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otakushowboat, follow me on Twitter at otakushowboat, and visit my website at otakushowboat.com. You can also help support my continued existence on Patreon at patreon.com slash otaku showboat. You can also support Pianodon and further mod development at patreon.com slash Pianodon. Also, as a disclaimer, the Pi Suite is in a constant state of flux, so anything I say may eventually change. Also, for the purposes of demonst For the purposes of demonstrating uh, the individual components of the Pi Suite. Today, uh, I will be loading up a save that uses the uh, Infinity mod. Otherwise, the enabled mods are going to be functionally identical to what is used in my stream save, my first stream save from Twitch, the list of which mods are used are available in the link to my stream schedule page below this video. With that said, let us begin. So if I look off to the side uh, a lot today, that is because I'm looking at a document that has what I want uh, to mention here about each of these individual mods. We're going to start from the mod page in Pyanodons. Or, bleh. The, we will start today on the mod page in Factorio. Uh, and talk about first Pi Coal Processing. Pi Coal Processing is the basis uh, of this mod pack. It is what will change and extend a lot of uh, vanilla. Uh, it is what will give you access to new foundries, new factories, etc. And it will also change red science, green science, and blue science for you. Uh, it will add uh, some various biotic processing. It's a little bit of a mix of just about everything else that's included in this mod pack. Uh, and also, everything else in this mod pack extends upon uh, pipe coal processing. So this is your base section of the mod, and everything else sort of builds uh, upon pipe coal processing. And there's only really one... Uh, of the mods that is not dependent upon Pi Coal Processing, and I do believe that that is Pi Industry, uh, because it is an optional dependency uh, for Pi Industry. And we will talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so next up is Pi Fusion Energy. Pi Fusion Energy adds in a few things. Uh, by its title, it adds in fusion energy into the game, uh, which is helium-based fusion energy. So think that it's going to add many, many ways of getting helium 
to use for fusion energy production. Uh, and I do believe that it adds, it also adds molybdenum as a resource and its chain. It adds vanadium and diamonds as well. So three of the rarer items in this mod pack and definitely two of the longer vanadium is definitely the biggest most complex chain i think in the entire mod pack that is added in pi fusion energy although there are ways of dodging i think all three of these uh with pi high tech because pi high tech oh one other thing pi fusion energy is also responsible for updating the purple science your production science pack so do bear that in mind this one will give you uh the standard recipe for the production science pack uh, as well and then pi high tech uh will do a lot of things its primary focus is the uh, mid towards late game i would say although it does touch all aspects um this is the circuit overhaul. Uh, this one is what is responsible for making circuits a lot more complex uh, across the board. Uh, four levels of circuits, technically four levels of circuits uh, in this mod pack. Um, it's circuits, it's new robots, so you get new logistic and construction bots available at various stages of the game uh, in this. Uh, you also get the addition of rayon to batteries. Uh, rayon as a resource becomes available uh, and that gets applied to other mod sections and all recipes across the board for batteries. So do bear that one. In mind, if you're using high tech, expect rayon for batteries uh, and a few other things later on down the line. Uh, this one also adds phosphate processing as well as more biotics and rare earth uh, processing and particle accelerator recipes, which will allow you to dodge some of the complex chains that uh, are added in Pi Fusion if you so desire at the cost of a lot of power. Otherwise, it's just, like, generally really high-tech things, using particle accelerators, uh, and so on. I think this one also has the, uh, the Singularity Reactor, which is basically a, a black hole that you feed whatever you want into, and it produces energy. Just, you know, casually place down a black hole to shove your excess items into to get a little bit of energy out of it instead of... Uh, burning it in a burner, you can instead shove th your byproducts into a black hole and actually gain some energy out of it instead of having to use your fuel to fuel the burners. So, that's a thing. Next up to talk about Pi Industry on this list. Uh, Pi Industry, as I said, it's not necessarily dependent upon Pi Coal Processing, you could actually use this in any other playthrough that you want. This one is just a utility mod. Uh, pi Industry adds in, adds in some pipes, some new pipes, uh, niobium pipes, uh, that have a much, much greater underground distance than standard iron pipes. It also adds a variety of new tanks for fluids, as well as a variety of new storage buildings and warehouses with logistic network variants. And it adds in valves, various valves for pipes. And it adds in um, means of voiding items. It adds a flare stack a burner, and a sinkhole. And 
more ants, and it adds in better accumulators, a low tier and high tier version of radars, as well as uh, a two wooden tiers of walls and a concrete tier of wall. So it adds a lot of useful, what I would call utility items uh, to deal with a lot of uh, byproducts and such, and uh, being able to do your pipe logistics a little bit easier. Especially if you are using the next mod, Pi Petroleum Handling. Now, Pi Petroleum Handling, this is your Angel's Petrochem of Pyanodon's mods. This is the one that will make oil and natural gas and tar resources like really 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 more complex by adding in various intermediary stages various uh different types of fluids and such that you have to deal with uh so this is your major fluid slash gas part of this mod uh, but this is also the mod that will add in the small parts advanced small parts and special small parts that will apply to most everything else in the mod pack uh, including all the belts all the inserters all the buildings they're all gonna need these small parts and that is all brought into play through pi petroleum handling and then pi rot wars this is of course the very long and relatively complex ore processing chains allowing you to progress throughout the game and increase the amount of plates per ore that you uh, ultimately obtain in your processing of ores so that is that is the primary pie suite. That is what exists of the main pie suite mods. There is, however, one additional major component that is currently in development. What is that mod? That mod is Pinodon's Alien Life. It is not released. It is not even close to being in a state to test it uh, at the moment. I want to discuss it here because that is the next thing that is coming in the pipeline. Alien Life, as you might suspect, is based heavily on the biotic side of things, and its goal is to add additional ways of getting resources renewably. That's really what it's all about, gaining resources renewably through biotic means. There are two versions of this mod that are planned. One version is for people who play with biters enabled and one for who play with biters disabled. The one with biters enabled aims to have the various different creatures on the map as actual creatures that you can fight and capture and all that and corral and use and breed and slaughter and all that wonderful, wonderful stuff that's going to be coming in Pi Alien Life. And the other version, of course, just gives you, uh, if you don't have Biters enabled, it just gives you the ability to get uh, the various animals and such through another means, through tech or something, and then you can like grow them from samples or whatever. So that is in the works. If you would like to follow the development, there is a thread for Pi Alien Life in the Factorio forums in the Pyanodons mods section uh, of uh, of general mods, the general mods forum. Uh, so there is a thread for Pi Alien Life there. However, I will also note that Pyanodon is posting updates with pictures of new 
buildings and such that are coming in Pi Alien Life on the Patreon page for Pandon. So Pi's Patreon page is where you can find the most up-to-date editions that will be coming in Pi Alien Life. And to get access to the posts, you will have to join at the Circuit 2 tier or higher. Circuit 2 is for $3 per month to get access to those updates. I am in the Circuit 3 tier uh, for reference and am paying $5 per month to be in the Circuit 3 tier. And the Circuit 3 tier gives you access to eventually... Uh, any polls that uh, may be posted in regards to the future development of the mods. Uh, there is one more tier higher than that, and that is a $10 tier, and that will be uh, a tier where Pyodon will consider suggestions. That is the one where suggestions may be considered. Uh, so do bear that in mind. Now, as for side mods... As for the side mods, let's start with the ones that directly change the Pi Suite. Pi Borer Reversion. I, of course, have to start with this one because Pi Borer Reversion is made by me. It's made by me. I made this one. Um, this one reverts ground boring recipes from using drilling fluid back to lubricant. That is all it does. Uh, the change to lubricant happens or the change from lubricant to drilling fluid happened in the middle of my uh, playthrough on Twitch, my current playthrough on Twitch, and I had already set up a little bit of ground boring uh, of ores. Uh, so I decided, you know what, I want to make this transition, but I know that it's going to be a lot of work to do drilling fluids, to set up drilling fluids. Uh, so I just made this mod so that it, could stay lubricant for the time being until I set up drilling fluids. Uh, and I will actually be turning this mod off very shortly uh, in my playthrough, but it is here and it is available to any and all who would rather not have drilling fluids uh, for the ground blowing recipes, but would prefer what it used to be, which is lubricant. This is currently version 17.4 of the Pi Borer Reversion, and it shouldn't need to be updated again. Unless for some reason Planeton either adds an extra ore type uh, or something and adds in another uh, rank of drilling fluid, like a drilling fluid 4 or something. Only then would I need to update Pi Borer Reversion because I pretty much have brute forced uh, this uh, replacement. Basically, for every ore type, I say replace drilling fluid 1 with lubricant, drilling fluid 2 with lubricant, and, and drilling fluid 3 with lubricant. So I say replace all three. Chances are one of those three is going to be listed for any one ore type. So if he changes uh, an ore type to be fluid 2 from 1, or 1 from 2, or 2 to 3, or 3 to 2... That won't matter anymore. It'll still revert it. Outside of Pi Borer Reversion, there's also one... Uh, if I go to install and do a search and search for Pi Functional. Pi Functional. Basically, this one gives options to do reverse recipes of petrochemicals. That's the main thing. It it wants to add ways of dealing with things that are not available in the base mod. So think things like being able to convert hydrogen chloride into hydrogen and chlorine. Uh, that process, that recipe doesn't exist in the base pie mods yet. You can only go the route of hydrogen plus chlorine into hydrogen chloride, not the reverse direction. This mod adds the reverse direction, as well as a number of other things. I personally don't use this mod, but it is uh, another one of the extensions to the Pi Suite. Uh, speaking of extensions to the Pi Suite, 
uh, pie veganism is the next one to talk about. This one aims to remove ins all instances of animal cruelty from uh, the pie suite to which I say that's a lot of work for one uh, it needs to change a lot in the pie suite it is actively being worked on it is technically in testing and I just have to say good luck with pie alien life because that entire section that entire mod is sort of based off of the concept of growing and slaughtering animals like the entire basis of pie alien life is raising animals and then slaughtering them in a slaughterhouse for their products and grinding them up and getting all of the wonderful juices and fluids out of them and carapaces and yeah it's it's going to be wonderful So that'll be a lot of work for uh, pie veganism coming up uh, eventually. Uh, we shall see how Tirsif handles uh, that. Uh, the next one is Pie Block. Pie Block. Think C Block, but Pyodons. I, I think I can just leave it at that. <laughs> I think you get the picture uh, if I say C Block for Pyodons. Um, you start off on a little single tile in a ocean world and have some initial resources to get you going otherwise that's it uh, and it changes a few things around so that you can gain resources from water uh, the pie suite is actually very conducive to this style of play without that many edits it just needed to add in a few changes to make things available from the start of the game as well as uh, a method of getting rare earth uh, material uh, from nothing basically rare earth from nothing is uh, a brand new process that had to be added for pie block um, because that is the one thing that does not exist uh, in the main pie suite otherwise there are methods of gaining everything from water power slash space uh just by default uh the next one i'll talk about is actually going to be uh module slot overhaul for pyanodons this one is also made by tirsif good old teary the uh, pie veganism author. This one modifies the module slots of the Pyandon's buildings. Uh, by default, Pyandon's buildings, when you increase the mark level, tend to mostly stay the same in terms of number of module slots, or even lose module slots as you increase the tier level. That isn't for everyone, to say the least. So this mod allows you to choose how you would like the scaling of module slots to progress. Either just a flat plus one, or some sort of uh, multiplication or addition based off of mark level. Uh, etc. It has a few options available to it in, on just how many module slots you want the higher tier buildings to have, and uh, I definitely, definitely make use of this. Uh, granted, for the vast majority of people, a mod like this only, well, normally, this mod will only actually come into play after you get to Circuit Board 2s. How many people get to Circuit Board 2s? Hopefully a lot more people once I get to that point uh, with this tutorial series. But for now, just know that not many people actually make it to Circuit Board 2s for this type of mod to even matter in the first place. But for someone like me who has gotten past Circuit 2s and I'm making uh, modules now, 
this absolutely matters and i uh definitely enjoy having this mod it reduces the sheer volume and number of buildings that you need to get stuff done uh overall and then the next one is of course pie coal touched by an angel i should definitely make mention of this one this one is king arthur same as pie block this is what king arthur is currently working on rather than doing updates to pie block to balance it at the moment uh, because pie coal touched by an angel needed a complete rewrite so what does this mod do this mod aims to make compatible a lot of the major overhauls and their derivatives uh, with pyanodons. So think Bob's Angels, Mad Clowns for Angels, Omnimatter, AAI, and Bio Industries. Those are the main ones, also apparently K Cow Extended and uh and space extension as well to make all of that compatible with the pie suite all of that or any of that uh is the idea here and as you might expect that's very complex it's very difficult to do, to do and to pull off in the current state of the current full rewrite of this mod suite not everything is working yet i don't know if omnimatter for example is currently actually working there is a pre-release available on the forums uh, as of this recording uh, and it will be released very soon uh, as an actual update to the mod uh, and then balancing will progress from there this is just to get everything working on this initial new release after the rewrite uh, and then uh, it will proceed into a balancing phase and hopefully at some point uh, King Arthur can spare some time to look at some of the balancing stuff with Pi Block because it's still pretty rough around the edges on Pi Block. So those are the like major side mods to Pyanodons. Uh, outside of things like locales and such. What other mods do I suggest using if you are playing a Pyanodons game? Now, I'm going to limit this to mods that have some degree of function to them. Uh, so, let's start with actual craft time. Actual craft time displays the actual crafting time per second for assemblers furnaces, etc. I will note that while this is an incredibly useful mod for planning, it puts the recipe right up in the top left-hand corner. I will show this off when we load up the save in a little bit. This mod is four months outdated at this point and has not been updated yet. Uh, it needs two changes when playing the pie suite. One, change you should do regardless whether or not you're actually using this for the pie suite and one change that is very specific to the pie suite for compatibility purposes uh, and i will have th both of these lines of code that need to be modified listed in the text version of this overview on my website the link of which is in the description below this video but just know that line 347 and line 657 need to be edited uh, for this. And I do think that those are correct. Yes, line 347 and line 657 need edits. Line 657 is the one that you need to do regardless. Uh, and line 347 is the line that needs to be edited for the purposes of Pyanodon's mods. Uh, if you're using them. Uh, the next one I would suggest is the alien biomes with the Pyra's terrain. Uh, while this may seem a lot more like a cosmetic mod, in part it is. 
But it also, by using it, gives you a lot more access to stone. It spawns a lot more stone. I think it spawns overall more trees as well, and that's very important for the early game. Uh, this alien biomes, by using it, will inherently help your early game uh, when you start the game. Uh, because you will have access to more huge rocks with coal, and I also believe more tr variety of trees that spawn overall uh, nearby. So you need two things in the early game with Pinodons mods. Wood and coal uh, are the big things that you need in the really early game. So this actually can help with that while also looking really pretty. Uh, and I always suggest that. Now, um, Bottleneck is useful. I did not note this one down yet in the, for the written version of the guide while recording this video. But Bottleneck shows you whether or not a machine is operating 100% of the time, or is input starved, or is output restricted. Uh, it puts a little uh, light indicator on every single machine uh, that you have that will uh, shine as either green, yellow, or red. If it's green, everything is fine. It is operating 100% uh, just fine. If it's yellow, that means it is output starved. Uh, that means that it is currently paused while waiting for its output to leave the machine. Uh, and you want to try to avoid that as much as possible. And if it's red, that means it's input starved. That means the, the machine does not have enough inputs to begin its process. So that helps you visualize proper ratios and all of that. It helps you visualize what's actually happening. It helps identify issues, uh, which is why I use it. Um, but this is not a specific mod to pine it on, which is why I don't know if I'm going to include it in the written guide. It helps with a mod as complex as Pyanodons, but it is useful for far more than just Pyanodons. I will definitely make note of that. Um, loaders in general. So, I currently have enabled just because change has happened over time in my uh, playthrough uh, on Twitch, but just loaders in general between mini loaders, loader redux, and deadlocks loaders. Loaders in general are up to you whether or not you want to use them. I think that they are quite useful in a mod suite such as this to help with logistics. And uh, I think that is where I will end that discussion. Just know that I do suggest having some form of loaders uh, when using this mod. In, particularly, in particular because it will help a lot with belt balancing as well. You can shove you can load things into warehouses and then use loaders to pull things out of warehouses for however many you want into however many you want out and it just the the warehouse becomes your belt balancer at that point it sort of abstracts the concept of a uh, of a belt balancer just in the space of the uh, warehouse that you're using and the loaders loading into it uh, so that is something that I wanted to make note of. Uh, the next one, even distribution. Even distribution is very useful in the early game when helping to fuel your burner machines, uh, but it does have its uses throughout the game, uh, particularly for the shift plus C shortcut uh, that allows you to distribute evenly anything that's in your inventory to any machine that needs the item that's within your inventory, but it will also clear up your items in your logistic trash slots into any uh, into any storage container that contains a copy of that item in it. So if you have something in your logistic trash slots and you have a 
container that has copies of the items that also happen to be in your logistic trash slots. If you shift C, it will dump them into that chest for you, which is amazing. Uh, and it will definitely help you save some time. Nanobots. Nanobots is the next one I will mention simply because you know how I mentioned that you need a lot of wood in the early game? That means you're probably going to tend to use ma map settings that have a lot of forests. Eventually, you're going to, you know, automate your wood production, which means that eventually you're going to have way too many forests to have to clear. Uh, and nanobots will help with that. And if you are using alien biomes, you're also chances are you're going to be incredibly frustrated eventually uh, when you come across your first volcanic zone and just see just the sheer amount of rocks that infest the volcanic biomes. Uh, nanobots uh, will be your answer to that. Oh, and, uh, you know, they, they, they help you build things. Yeah, they, they do that too. They, uh, they help one build things. I think that is relatively important. Important. They help one build things. Uh, the next one, of course, will be Resource Spawner Overhaul. I highly suggest this one across the board. This will make sure that you are able to... Or that you will pretty much always have every resource within a reasonable amount of distance uh, from your spawning locations. Uh, and, particularly, you can customize however you would like uh, the resource generation. So RSO, very great if you want a map that's incredibly void of resources with huge spaces between giant war patches that are incredibly dense or not incredibly dense. Uh, this is definitely a mod to look at. Or if you're someone like me who prefers to just set up and never worry again, uh, you can just make really huge war patches very, very commonly and have like a hundred X war density, resource density. So you can go both ways with that, uh, making things harder or easier at your pleasure uh, with resource spawner overhaul. Then the stone water wells uh any sort of water anywhere now this of course is optional depending on whether or not you want to deal with uh logistics of moving water around but the pie suite has a lot of processes that involve a lot of water while a lot of it does have closed water loops and you can break the input of water to those processes, there are still many other processes that still consume water overall. So I would highly suggest having a way of getting a nearby source of water wherever you need it. I personally prefer stone water wells. These are just large offshore pumps in disguise. These are, these are offshore pumps in disguise. They take up a five by five square and you can place them anywhere. Uh, there's also the option of something like explosive excavation, which you have to actually make an explosive charge, and you physically make a water tile that you then put an offshore pump on. There's also things like water fill, and yeah, there's, there's lots of options of being able to get water anywhere. Uh, I prefer stone water wells. I think it's somewhat balanced in terms of the amount of space that it takes as well. Um, so that's what that's what I prefer doing, just to save on the pipe spaghetti or the pipe getty of uh, having to run a ton of water everywhere. And then I guess the last like main one that I would suggest using would be a to-do list. Um, for pretty obvious reasons. I mean, the Piedon's suite is incredibly complex. It adds many, 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 many chains uh, to the game. A checklist will 
definitely help you keep track of what needs to be done and uh, what you're currently working on slash what you should be doing next. So with that, let's head on into the game and actually show you some of the things that are added in the various individual portions of the pie suite. Okay, let's have a look at what is actually given to you in each of the specific pieces of the Pyanodon's mod suite. What is divided in which way? So, Pi Coal Processing, you've got four mark levels of foundries, factories, wood processing units to convert logs into various wood products, uh, including wood itself, uh, ball mills that tend to get used a lot by pyro, filters that will remove impurities, often using uh, filters, uh, classifiers, the classiest of classifiers that shake, 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 desulfurizator units, destructive distillation columns, evaporators, fluid separators, FTS reactors, gasifiers, high pressure furnaces, methanol reactors, olefin plants, jaw crushers, powerhouses, quenching towers, rectosols, solid separators, tar processing units, washers. Those are just ones at the top that give you four mark levels. You've also got crystal mines at four mark levels, as well as sand extractors and botanical nurseries and soil extractors. And then you've got combustion turbines and cooling towers. Three levels of combustion turbines, a CO2 absorber, two levels of cooling towers, tailings ponds, means of making various different types of chemicals, uh, mushrooms through Fawagi plantations, ground boring, limestone production, you've got Ulrich, aka horses. Lots and lots of various different types of things that touch many, many aspects of the game. Uh, as I had said, this is the core of the mod pack, and this is what overhauls and touches basically every aspect of the game in and of itself, all by itself. Next up is the industry items. Uh, this is everything that is added in Pi Industries. You've got accumulators, you've got burners, gas vents, and sinkholes, devoid items, your high-end and your low-end radars, all the various different types of tanks uh, and valves and pipes, concrete walls and two levels of wooden walls, various different levels of uh, warehousing, as well as a ton of walking tiles. Uh, of course, the best being the 210% on the aluminum tile, which is relatively cheap to make, as well as has a wonderful, wonderfully high uh, walking speed, although it is technically beaten by Nexlet tile uh, out here. And since Nexlet is made out of tailings, which can be gotten for free, as well as tar, uh, which can also be gotten for free, and gravel, which can be gotten for free, uh, yeah, 240% is probably a, the much uh, better option. Now, because I have the Infinity mod installed, I can do something uh, just like this to show what Nexlet tile looks like. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a boost. Uh, let's, yeah, I'm not even running. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a little bit faster, I think, than, uh, and the base running speed. Uh, so yeah, all that gets added in uh, in Pi Industry. Pi Fusion. Uh, oh, oh, also uh, Pi Coal. Uh, you know, new, new red science, green science, and blue science. Automation, logistics, and chemical. Uh, Pi Fusion will add in here uh, the... Is it here? No, it's not here. It's right... Yeah, production science pack in Pi Fusion. Um, using Pi Fusion items like control units and all of that wonderful stuff. So lots of buildings get added in Pi Fusion. 
We've got agitators, diamond mines, molybdenum mines, regolite mines, nanomaterial factories, phytoplankton farms, secondary crushers, thickeners, hippos. I'm just I'm, I'm just gonna call them hippos. Uh, gas processing units, uh, hydrocyclones, pressure pumps, automated screeners, bioreactors, centrifugal pans, compressors, gen labs. Genetics labs, okay. Jigs, kamouts, which are like land arthropoid insect thingies, uh, grease tables, and mixers. Those are the built primary buildings that get added in this, as well as several items and like grease and vanadium and molybdenum processing and uh, apparently boron trioxide dust and boron gets added in here, uh, some alloys, uh, but yeah, this one's primarily known, uh, for your fusion chains, so helium processing, vanadium processing, and, uh, adding in molybdenum mines, that is the primary thing, molybdenum mines for molybdenum ore processing into plates, so all of that is through pi Fusion. I just wanted to like look at these. I haven't actually looked at these yet. This is just me being uh being me and seeing oh hey look it's alien bacteria that's and an Elgas bacteria yeah you can even do bacteria and phytoplankton bacteria will be involved uh, with uh, helium I think a little bit anyway actually it's involved in that's one of the other science packs, too. So, Pi... Hi-Tech gives you access to <laughs> to this beautiful thing. Uh, remember, I was talking about the, uh, the black hole that you can shove literally anything into. That you can shove... Really? Alright. So, apparently, you can't shove buildings into it, but you can shove, like... Oh, belts, belts, right, you can't, that's right, you can't, uh, you can't shove things in by hand, you have to use some form of inserter, what I'm going to do actually is do this, grab loaders, uh, loader, loader, thingy, and shove, 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 shove. And matter. And matter. So it converts the things into matter and it burns the matter and makes energy. So it's how, this is a new voiding structure that you'll get access to uh, in the really late game with Pi High Tech. It's after circuit board threes as well as super capacitors and superconductors. And you need a particle accelerator to make it too. So yeah, this is really later, much, much later into the game. But Pi High Tech is what is responsible for the uh, more complex circuit board 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Uh, it is also what's responsible for adding in, apparently, the various methanes through Moondrop greenhouses. You've got PCB factories, chip shooter machines, the Kikalk plantations to give you fiber. You've got the Cadaveric Orem greenhouse, which gives you a uh, a sulfur gas product that's used later on in higher level of circuit production. Uh, I think Circuit 3s use some of that. Um, rare Earth Extraction is here, so you get Rare Earth added, you get Phosphate Processing added, you get Clay you get clay added. The Zipiers are added for Collagen. You have Augs for Urea, you've got FB Reactors, Electronics Factories, Pulp Mills, Quantum Computers, Nano Assemblers, and then a High Tech Pump Jack. This is where you will also get a recipe that will give you red, green, blue, 
gray and purple science. All from the same recipe. Three of all of the above uh, for this. Note that it uses liquid helium and a whole bunch of really high-tech things. Um, but this is a pretty decent recipe, I think, to uh, help simplify, actually, the uh, overall science production. Uh, you also get access here to... So Pi High Tech adds the updated utility science. Uh, I will note that Pyro... Pyro ores is what will change uh, military science. Uh, utility science packs are a lot of things. Uh, this is Pi High Tech and Pi Raw Ores. Uh, raw Ores, I think, adds the Super Steel uh, onto this. So for the most part, this one is added uh, through High Tech. And then, of course, Space Science is through High Tech. And Space Science can be gained through Quantum Computing. Through Quantum Computing! Quantum computers give you all the science besides utility, as well as space science. Wait, is that the same recipe? That is, like, practically the same recipe. Except this is 40 seconds. NVC, PJJ, QD... Yeah, that is a functionally identical recipe between the two. So you can either get space science or you can get all of the other science outside of utility, uh, which is great. So, yeah, you can just make space science like, yeah, you can just, you can just make space science here uh, out of quantum computers. Good luck getting all the other things to start doing it. But yeah, you can, uh, that is a thing you can do. Uh, that is a thing you can do thanks to the power of Pi High Tech. And then all of the quantum, or all of the uh, particle accelerator recipes be allowing you to convert things into other things for a lot of power. Not all of it is worth it, but the vanadium is always going to be worth it. The vanadium from chromium in particular is going to always be worth it. Uh, getting the uranium ore might be worth it. This is the only way to get infinite amounts of uranium ore. Uh, you could choose also to, for some reason, make U-235 out of 10 units of U-238. Uh, it's like, well, Covarex exists. That, I think, is a little bit better than that. Um, you can make silver out of copper, and then you can make gold out of silver, and then you can make uranium out of gold. So you can actually make uranium out of copper, basically, uh, through particle accelerators for a lot of power for a lot of power uh, you can also convert graphite to diamonds you can convert chromium to molybdenum there's lots of lots of options here pi petroleum handling adds a bunch of buildings at various mark levels to and it adds tholins as well uh, so that is something I hadn't mentioned previously. This one adds tholins and the ability to get a, a whole bunch of different gases uh, converted out of tholins, uh, which is uh, actually a wonderful way of getting chlorine uh, as well as propene in particular. Uh, also, technically, acetylene can be considered to be more energy efficient uh, when using tholins as odd as that sounds, because Tholins is, you spend a lot of power to be able to make some things from nothing at the cost of a lot of buildings and a lot of power. Uh, so, yeah, think of this, it adds uh, means of getting saline water through, like, fracking, using drilling fluids, and all that other good stuff. This is also what adds drilling fluids into, into the game, as well as alternative, more efficient means of getting engine units and of getting uh, various different types of inserters. As well as being able to convert tar into various different products, including light and heavy oil, 
This is also what's responsible for your small parts, your advanced small parts, and your special small parts. And then Pyrot Wars, of course, adds in all of the various buildings that are used in the ore processing chains, as well as reduction and centering. And it adds in all of the, uh, it has all the plate recipes, it has hot air recipes if you're using pie petroleum handling, because that's what adds in hot air. You've got the molten casting, you've got, yeah, plenty of things, gold production. Uh, pyro is a requirement for some of the other mods to even function, so... Definitely uh, bear that one in mind as well. So that is going to pretty much wrap it up. Uh, you also get all of the various different large mines. And for the purposes of making this tutorial, I've actually come up with an idea. Uh, because I've noticed that this recipe exists. Uh, which means, like, for this tutorial... I came across this recipe and just making just making this tutorial series is helping out my own play on my own personal playthrough because I had planned going forward on my own stream save to start doing ground boring of basically every ore that's worth doing ground boring for which is all of them for the exception of Nexlet and for the exception of quartz because there is a better way of getting quartz outside of ground boring well now i'm seeing that there is a better way of getting nickel outside of ground boring uh that is a lot of units of tar per ore though but um i have means there are means of getting infinite amounts of tar and infinite amounts of hydrogen hydrogen is very simple for just splitting water but tar is uh, converting coal into tar uh, is how you do it, and you can get uh, your mushrooms, your fowlgate mushrooms, into coal and tar, but that's getting completely separate and off on a tangent. I just want to know, note that uh, this recipe is giving me some ideas. Like, just going through and having a look at the recipes uh, in a map like this that has all the text unlocked uh, for you, thanks to the Infinity mod. Uh, just having a look. Uh, going through all the things that are available can give you some ideas and help you learn. Uh, of course, I would also make use of what is it really used for, uh, which I definitely prefer over FNEI. Uh, what is it really used for is a recipe searcher. For, so if I do for a search for nickel or, or just nickel uh, and pull up this recipe we can see that there are three ways of getting nickel through recipes as well as through direct mining so this is the recipe that i was looking at uh it is 10 every four seconds in a ionic upgrader mark one all right well an ionic upgrader is a high petroleum handling building now, I will be using a Mark II version, most likely. Uh, when I do set this up, it has this recipe, and then to see if I wanted to get 15 per second, it's very reasonable. Wow, that is very reasonable. So remember what I said about uh, the disclaimer that things may change uh, with uh, Pyandon's mods? Because I have this in the video... And I'm showing this. This is the type of thing that will happen when you are studying uh, the Pyandons mods. This is the type of thing that you can consider uh, when doing Pyandons, when playing as Pyandons mods. So, with that, uh, that pretty much covers the overview of what is added in all of the various pieces of the Pyandons mod pack. Uh, I think the only thing that I have not really mentioned in detail is that I do use what is it really used for rather than FNEI uh, and I highly suggest having some sort of recipe searcher uh, when first learning or just to have in general so that you can 
do things like search for, hey, how do I process iron ore? So how do I process iron ore into plates? Well, there is a hot air recipe for iron. There is standard iron and standard iron. You can also convert it into processed. And then you can go from processed to grade one to iron dust. You can use the iron dust for iron pulp for uh, either unslimed iron or concentrate. Or concentrate and you can make concentrate into dust concentrate into pulp 7 into high grade iron into molten or reduced or centered reduced to centered to molten to plates or ferrochromium alloy or niobium iron alloy or molten steel or molten stainless steel or molten super steel for super steel you you get the idea this you can go digging deep down into the various rabbit holes of uh production chains with uh a mod like that uh and this is the tutorial map so you're just seeing the uh the quartz chain so if you're wondering how i go about finding things like the quartz chain how do i go about finding easily what the actual chain looks like i'm just using what is it really used for and searching for the individual components along the chain and just following uh the chain within the ui uh for what is it really used for and uh noting where there's branches following each branch to their conclusion or wherever they meet back up if they meet back up and going from there. That's how you deal with uh, things in Pandons and that is going to wrap up our overview. I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been Otaku Showboat and I hope to see you all on the next tutorial where I will be covering the automation and production of Red Science. This will be a continuation of the previous tutorial which was getting to the point of your first handcrafting of red science this will just be a continuation of that map at the point where you will be thinking about setting up the automation of red science because that is generally the point that people are going to be thinking about and looking for a tutorial for red science so it should be topical or it should be more relevant to those people who would be searching for a tutorial for Red Science. Uh, so I will do that. I will explain what you need to do prior. Overview of what you need to do prior. What you need to set up to do the automation of the Red Science. The specific text that you need to get to the point where you can automate your Red Science. Uh, and executing the automation of uh, the Red Science. So that will be uh, the next tutorial. Again, thank you all for watching. If you have enjoyed this particular overview of the Pi Suite, as well as recommended additional mods to go with the Pi Suite, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you are so inclined, you can head on over to twitch.tv slash otakushowboat to leave a follow, follow me on Twitter at otakushowboat, and visit my website at otakushowboat.com. You can also help further support my continued existence and the increased production volume of these tutorials by heading over to Patreon at patreon.com slash otaku showboat. You can also further support the development of the mod set itself at patreon.com slash And I do hope to see you all on the next one.